All right, let's get in the eight passive income ideas that you can do this year. One, rental income. So if you want to manage rental properties or start owning rental properties, that's a great way. You can make money in real estate and you can do really well. There are a couple of ways to get into real estate. You can buy a property and live in it. And after a few years, you move to another house and you rent the old property out. I did that on my first home. So it, it's very easy to do and you can set that up. You can buy a duplex or a fourplex. You can rent one of the units and then you rent out the other units to other people. Hopefully, you know, you won't be paying anything if you do it that way, since the other units will hopefully cover all your costs and expenses like mortgage, water bills, repairs. Use that extra money to pay down the property that you currently have, or you can set up for a down payment to buy another property. Get an investor with money to use their money to buy rentals. That's another great way to go buy rentals. You might be asking, you know, how is rental property passive? It sounds like I'm gonna to have to do a lot of work. If you do all the repairs and you manage everything, then it's not gonna be as passive. Owning a few properties, even if you manage them yourself, like I do, me and my partner, and you do the repairs, like we do do some repairs, or we used to, now we don't do as much. It took about four or five hours a month. That's literally. It. Unless you have a tenant that moves out, and then you need to rehab the property or do a lot of work there, that would take more than a few weeks and a lot more hours maybe 10 to 20 hours in a two-week period to really get that place ready for the next tenant make sure you do not overpay for the home to do your research on how much you should be paying and then know the tenant laws before buying and how do you evict someone and how long does it take in that city or state that you're in to get somebody evicted in my city and state i can get somebody out in about 30 days which is a rarity a lot of times it's three four or five months you want to calculate all your costs for expenses you know when you're buying a home so let's say you buy a duplex for 150,000, you can get 1100 dollars in rent each side if your mortgage payment is like let's say 1300 bucks a month this includes taxes and insurance and then you might have water costs let's say 100 bucks a month then you have repairs okay and vacancy and people do not calculate that in love but let's say it's 150 a month rough estimate so your total rent coming in is 2200 bucks money going out 1550 your cash flow is roughly about 650 a month so this is a just easy way for you to kind of see how you should calculate costs, you know, looking to buy a rental property. All right, next up, creating a course for passive income. So this is a, an online course. So if you're an expert in something, whether it's coding or cooking, or maybe you're a filmmaker, or maybe you are really good at SEO or affiliate marketing or any of anything like that, you can build a blog and create an audience and get those people to your site to really check out your course. So why would you consider creating an online course? Well, it's a fantastic way to monetize your skills and share your passion and help others along the way. Because a lot of people are looking for this information that you might be an expert at. So first up, you gotta choose like, what are you going into? What's your niche? What are you passionate about? What are you an expert in? Or what can you become an expert in, right? So you need to really reflect on that and try to pick out a great niche that might be something that you can make a course on. You can start a course with some knowledge too. Like you don't need to be an expert. You just need to know a little and then you can just build up your knowledge as you build the course and as you add on to it. You want to know your audience uh, like the back of your hand. Know what they want and you have to deliver. Understanding their needs and tailoring your course to meet those needs is the key to success. You wanna plan out your content strategically. Break it down into digestible modules or lessons. Then you want your students to follow along easily and feel like you know they're making progress. So make the course really easy to understand and really easy to follow. Choose the right platform. So a platform is gonna be key. There's tons of them out there like Kajabi, a lot of people use or Teachable. Find one that aligns with your goals and is user-friendly for both you and your students. So I know a bunch of course creators and they really like Kajabi. I'll have a link in the description if you want to check it out. So now it's time to create engaging content. You want to make this content so people are blown away. You want to create videos, lectures, PDF, quizzes. You know, make it really creative. Make the learning experience for your students something they'll never forget. Now, it does have to be perfect to start as you go on and you can make the course better and better as, you know, months and years go on. 
based on user feedback, right? Okay, another next one up is affiliate marketing. So you can make money selling other people's product. So what is affiliate marketing? In a nutshell, it's a way for you to earn a commission, you know, by promoting someone else's products or service. So why would you do affiliate marketing? You know, what's in it for you? It's an excellent way to monetize your online presence without creating your own product. So when you create your own product, you know, you have to do shipping and create it and manufacturing and handle stuff. And in affiliate marketing, you don't have to do that. You simply earn a commission every sale or action generated through your unique affiliate link. Now let's check out the steps to master affiliate marketing and start raking in those affiliate earnings. So number one, you need to choose a niche. A lot of these, you know, you have to choose a specific niche or something to go into. The niche you decide will determine how much you will make with affiliate sales. So if you go into something with low selling stuff, you know, low cost, it's not gonna make much. So if you go in things with higher cost, you'll make more. So if you go into the outdoor niche, let's say, and you create an affiliate link for hiking tents or hiking, you know, boots or kayaks or canoes and so on, a kayak may cost up to 800 bucks, let's say. So your affiliate commission on something that is that much money is way greater than, let's say, if you, somebody clicked on an affiliate link you had for hiking boots and the cost for the boots were 100 bucks. Now, another one out there is software has some incredible payouts, okay? I promote software and just one of my software affiliate links that I have, I make $110 for every sale. And that's just not once, that's every month that that customer remains a customer. So I get paid forever until that customer cancels. So you wanna select reputable affiliate programs, whether it's Amazon Associates or Shales, Share a Sale or ClickBank. You can go out to those, I'll have the link in the descriptions. You can find those programs, clients are different businesses that you want to promote with affiliate links. Now don't forget about SEO. You want to use relevant keywords in your content to improve your search engine visibility. This way your audience can easily find your recommendations. Finally, you want to really analyze your performance. So as you're getting clicks, you're getting you're making money. These your affiliate program, you want to analyze what is doing the best for you and how it's working for you so you can adjust. Okay. Next up, dividend stocks, way to get passive income. So what are dividend stocks? Well, they're shares uh, in companies that pay out a portion of their profits to shareholders instead of just relying on stock, you know, stock price appreciation. So you get a steady income stream through regular dividend payments. So this idea is definitely passive income at its best, right? Because you're not doing anything, you're investing and then you're getting quarterly dividends, right? And that's the beauty of dividend stocks. As a shareholder, you get a piece of the company's profits just for holding on to their stock. I mean, you can't really get much better than that, right? So how do these dividend payments work? Companies typically distribute them on a regular basis, often quarterly. The amount you receive is based on the number of shares that you own. The more shares that you own or the the higher the payout you'll get. Okay, number five, we're gonna go how to make money, you know, creating YouTube content. How to do pass, how to make it passive income. So what is passive income on YouTube? Well, it's the art of making money from your videos long after you hit the upload button. So your video will make money year after year, month after month. The more and more people to see it, the more money you make. Step one is to build your YouTube empire is to choose a niche. So like we said with the other ones, you really got to pick a niche for this. One that you might be passionate about, you know, whether it's gaming, beauty, tech, unboxing, mystery, mystery gifts, or whatever it is, you need to pick something. The key is to create content that people really want to watch. So that people get informed or people get entertained with. Quality content is king. Invest in good equipment, master your editing skills, make your videos visually appealing so you can get more and more people coming to it. Monetizing your video is pretty straightforward. You can do ads is the most common way YouTubers make money. So once you hit a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours, you can apply for the YouTube partner program so you can start adding ads to your videos. Most YouTube channels average $3 to $5 per thousand uh, views, but there are other channels that can make up to $25 to $40 per thousand views. All right, number six is turn your app idea into passive income. So you might be wondering why build apps for passive income, right? 
Well, apps have become an integral part of our daily lives. Like we use apps for everything, right? The demand is soaring and people, if your app goes crazy, you can make a ton of money. So if you create the right app, it can lead to steady stream of income. And you know, we're gonna show you how to do that here. So step one, identify a niche. Same thing we've talked about all the others. Think about what a problem people face in their day-to-day -day lives and try to come up with an app to fix that. It could be productivity, app, fitness, entertainment. So finding a niche will help you, your app stand out in a crowded market. All right, next thing we wanna look at, number seven, make money short-term rentals, right? So why are short-term rentals such a hot topic? Well, they offer a fantastic opportunity to generate passive income by turning a house, a condo, or your apartment built, you know, building or an apartment unit that you own into a money-making asset. First things first, listing your space, right? So if you're if you've decided to go this route, you need to list it. You have platforms like Airbnb, VRBO. I've made it super easy to showcase your property to potential to potential renters. Now take some great photos, you know, highlighting the features and the rental unit, making it look really nice. And the beauty of short-term rental is the flexibility that it offers you, right? Whether you're going away for the summer or embarking on a long trip, or you just want to explore the world, you know, renting out your space can be a very lucrative endeavor. Okay, next one, boost your earnings with high yield savings. If you're looking for a way to grow your wealth with minimal effort, high yield savings accounts are an excellent option. So these accounts provide a safe and secure place to park your money while you're earning a more generous interest rate, you know, compared to like traditional savings accounts. Okay, so let's look at how do you choose the right high yield savings account. You want to look for reputable online or offline banks that offer you competitive interest rates. Compare the options and consider the factors like fees, withdrawals, restrictions and customer service, right? So what's gonna work for you? I'm currently getting 4.5% on my high yield savings account and I went with a local bank um, to set up that savings account. So these high yield savings accounts, they're low risk, easily accessible and can provide steady income of interest, you know, instead of just having your money sit in the bank in a regular savings account, not earning anything. Now, if you found this video helpful, Give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe for more financial insights, and let us know your thoughts in the comments.